Welcome to the new studio for HolmesHobbies.com. Our YouTube studio needed to change a little bit so I could tear down the hobby house and to mount my rigs I needed something like shelves or brackets to mount them and I designed this bracket in CAD. So what we're going to do is run down today why I did what I did, how I did it, and then if we have enough time I'll get into the printing aspects of it as well. So let's get started. So as you can see, here is a bracket. This is actually 200 millimeters long from here to here, roughly. And we got this little uh, tip, if you will, on here. This is the third revision that I had to do of this. The first ones, I made them a little short, just, you know, off of some eyeballing measurements. And then I realized that if there's any sort of sag over time that my rigs were gonna fall off without having this little extra catch on the end. But when I went to design it, I needed to make sure that it fit into these channels, whatever this stuff is called, slat board, slat wall. And I wanted to be able to get it in and out with a little hook action, which you can see with this, we insert it in and we go whoop, and it goes right down and in. It's kind of a tight fit and that's what I wanted. Not too tight because it'll break the slat wall, but it is what it is. So first let's open the drawing that I made for the bracket test and of course this is called bracket test here is our file as you can see we have a rounded edge down here and this is actually the profile right here that i'm following for the internal of the slats and if we look i did a pretty simple sketch in two dimensions we're gonna edit this sketch and as you can see, I use smart dimensions to make this exact and also to make it to where it wouldn't change whenever I made adjustments to it, right? So we have 10 millimeter top to bottom of this little hook, if you will, 5.8 millimeter depth, which is the depth of the actual slats or the slots in the slats. Then 19 millimeters, which would be a roundabout way for us to get kind of the width of this. So as you can see, uh, from here to here, we needed to have clearance for it to get on the outside of the slat and then everything on the external, all of this over here, it, it's, it really doesn't matter. But the biggest thing is that I wanted to be able to insert it in without going down the side and like sliding it all the way down the slat because we have eight foot of slats. And if I needed to replace one that's in here or change the positions of anything, it would just be a huge pain in the butt. So I made these with this rounded edge right here and it took me a couple of tries to get it just right, but I made it with that rounded edge so that I could insert this hook and then rick, do it. And, and it makes that noise as well on some of them kind of like, a <laughs> yeah, it's a tight fit. And that's what I wanted. So there we go. This was the first part. You don't want to print an entire bracket if you don't know what's going to fit, right? So we've made these little tests. The next thing that we did, we don't want to save. The next thing that we did was that I made the actual bracket. And like I said, this was pretty much the third revision, but let's just talk about this third revision here. We can look at the sketch. We are going to normal two, which means we're going to look at it straight on in our CAD software. This is SolidWorks that I'm using. And then what I did after I got the sketch done was that I extruded it to whatever thickness that I wanted. But let's look at the sketch. Let me tell you why I did what I did. So as you can see, all of these walls are three millimeters thick. The reason why I chose three millimeters is because the nozzle that I'm printing with on this particular printer, which is a Soval SV01, it's a one millimeter nozzle. And three one millimeter nozzles makes the walls on this. So it doesn't have to do any weirdness in the middle. It is fairly easy and fast for this to print. Also with a one millimeter nozzle, it has lots of strength. And I know from experience that a three millimeter wall on this is going to be super thick. Like, I mean, strong at least, it's not that thick, I guess. But if the slat wall wouldn't break, I could pretty much hang off of two of these. And if not two, definitely four. Way overkill for what we're doing, but it'll blow out the slat wall. Uh, this, this stuff and the way that I made it is uh, way overkill for it, which is great. You, you wanna do it that way. So as you can see, I've got a couple of triangles built in here. I really just kind of eyeballed it. You want the smaller triangles to be typically out here to give lots of stiffness. And then you have this triangle down here that pretty much pushes the weight. Let's say we have some weight in the middle here, which is about where our skid plate is going to sit. This triangle pulls that weight down to this point and then pushes it towards this, 
which that section actually butts against the wall. So we're not going to be flexing and, and pulling, you know, we don't just have like a thin section out here. We actually have this portion of our main triangle that pushes against the wall and keeps everything nice and stiff. So over the long term, this is PLA or PLA plus, depending on what color it was. It might sag, but it's not, it's probably not gonna sag. And if it does sag, it's really easy to just reprint them. Maybe make a little bit of change on here. But you can see three millimeter walls all the way around. I did 100 millimeters on the depth of it, if you will, and then 200 millimeters on the length. And that was about the right stiffness. And all that I did was I pulled that original file where we figured out kind of like, you know, what the hook was on there. I pulled that into this design and then after we got our sketch good, we went to extrude it. And this is the boss extrude right here. And uh, we can just look at it. You can see from the side view, you can see the boss extrude coming out right there. I guess we don't really need to see it, but you can see right here that I use 15 millimeters. I actually printed a lot of these at 10 millimeters at first, and they were just a little bit too wobbly side to side in this direction. They certainly work just fine. I've actually got a few regs that are sitting on them. It's, it's not bad. They're not going anywhere, but as well, that one almost went somewhere because it's sitting on those 10 millimeters. I went to 15 millimeters, and as you can see, they're a lot more solid they do have 50% more surface area for the rig to sit on so it's just not quite as slippery back and forth now some rigs that have weird geometry underneath you know this one are angles if you will the angles of our links are, are fairly sloped and so it doesn't really want to sit on that structure I may end up needing to print something a little more specific for this I don't know we'll see I'm not really into doing too much work on this Originally, I was gonna have a woodworker make a lot of these for me, and by the time he came back the next day with some of his samples, I was already printing some of these. And of course, he was like, yeah, just, just print them. Those are working just fine. They'll spend just as much money, you know, uh, uh, trying to have him make them that way as opposed to my time on this, which my time is relatively value. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where I could have spent a couple hundred dollars well, let's see. If I was gonna put 20 rigs up, I would need 40 brackets, and I was finding that the brackets that I needed range from five to $10 a piece. So we're looking at $400 in brackets, more than likely. Uh, and so I ended up spending way too much time doing this and, and, and getting it done. But now that we have the files in the printer, if I need another one, I just throw a spool on of the color that I want. And this purple is printing really nice, so I'm kind of sticking with the purple for now. The white looks really good too. Maybe let me know in the comments if you can even see, you know, the white versus the purple. What is the difference on that? Can you even see it on there? I really like the purple. But at any rate, I use the 15 millimeters for the extrusion. Now we're looking good and I think we're good to go. So um, on the printing, we may need to do a whole nother one on the printing, but what I ended up doing so that it would stick properly is we have this little brim here and you can just kind of like rip the brim off and we're good. It doesn't really take that long. It's uh, you know kind of a pain in the butt, but once you do it once, they're good for the rest of their lives. So it's one of those things where you, you just got to deal with it. It might print at this point without having the brim on there and that would be super nice. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it, that, that was it. It was a few seconds. Now, if I really want to clean it up, I've got this deburring tool and we can just pull the deburring tool right down the edge. This, uh, this silken PLA is a little bit tougher to do and I could just always use a, a knife even, you know, that would be nice and easy. But uh, we just want to make sure that we get the flashing off of where it inserts into our slat wall. That way it's a, a fit, not too tight of a fit, but a fit just like my kids have and then it is pretty much good to go there we go all right so i've made a mess on my table here nice clean table and let's see if it goes in oh yeah really nice I'll try over here yeah some of these are a little bit different tolerance oh, that one is actually our separation between the top and bottom boards a little tighter than the rest but i don't use that so there we go we're good boom goes right in i'll just We'll leave that one there for the moment but that's it it uh, really didn't take me but a few days of trial and error especially getting the printing to print right um i suppose there were a few fillets that i made on this just so it would print a little easier and the way that i have the settings it actually is hollow it doesn't have any infill it's just basically two walls 
on the outside and you can see it's hollow right there but the rest of it it's it's really stout like i said i can i can almost hang off of two of these if the slat board wouldn't blow out i mean you can see the entire slat board is moving here a rig there's not gonna be a problem oh yeah it's it's making our entire thing jiggle <laughs> all right so i believe that explains it much better than i needed to explain everything if you do have any questions leave them down below i'll do my best to get to them and if doing more of these 3d printing and cad projects is something that you would like to see let me know i think that would be a good thing for this new uh this new studio that we have we'll start something different so as always thanks for tuning in have a great day